Jonathan Davenport is going cup racing. We'll also talk the extreme midgets opening tonight. We've got an update on Ashton Torgerson and more. Let's go. It's Friday, March 10th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm sure by now uh, you've probably seen the news from yesterday. You guys are pretty hardcore, so uh, I would imagine you would have seen this. But if you haven't, here's what went down. When the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Bristol to race on the dirt coming up on April 9th, Jonathan Davenport will be in the field. It was announced yesterday that Superman will pilot a third entry for Colleg Racing, joining regular drivers Justin Haley and AJ Allmendinger. Davenport's big sponsor on his 49 lay model, Nutrien Ag Solutions. Uh, Nutrien, also a partner of Colleg's, has been for several years, so that's your connection here between the two. JD will drive the 13 car with Nutrien serving as his primary sponsor. Davenport mentioned yesterday to Flow Racing that Steve Martin, who is the general manager for Nutrien, helped set the whole thing up. And supposedly, this has been in the works since September or October of last year, and Davenport has actually been at a handful of NASCAR races since then to hang out with Colleg. He mentioned going to the Roval last season, and he was at the 500 weekend just a few weeks back. Uh, we saw Brett Griffin post a photo with Steve and with Davenport. Brett is one of the spotters at Colleg. He also co-hosts the Door Bumper Clear podcast over with Dirty Mo Media. I heard about this news just about a week ago, uh, and I had some kind of NASCAR industry friends confirm it, and I'm honestly surprised it hadn't leaked out sooner. Normally, once this kind of thing gets around the community, it's not long before it's uh, kind of out and about. I think this is a super cool deal. I think it would be fun to see JD get the chance here in a cup uh, in a cup car. Nice cross promotion opportunity too for the two disciplines between dirt and NASCAR. So now the next question is, how well do we think JD will do at Bristol? Based on past results from dirt drivers doing these one-off deals, I think I'd keep my expectations pretty low. We didn't really have any dirt ringers in the Bristol Cup race in 2022, but we did have several in the first race there back in 2021. Stuart Friesen was the highest finisher in 23rd, although he's not really kind of an outsider at this point. You know, Friesen runs the truck series pretty regularly. Obviously, he's incredibly handy in a big block modified and other things. Uh, you know, also has a World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series win on his resume, but he's not really kind of in this group. The guys in that race who were making big jumps included Shane Golubic, Chris Windham, and Mike Marler, although honestly, Marler and Windham had past NASCAR experience as well. But none of those three guys finished higher than 31st in that race. And if we widen the scope and include some of the truck races that we've had on dirt, we've seen Rico finish third at Eldora, but again, that was during uh, his full-time season. We've got top tens, though, from guys like Brian Brown, Logan Seavey, Bobby Pierce. Uh, there's also some not-so-great results in there. Uh, Scott Bloomquist tried uh, one of the dirt races one time with the truck series, didn't finish super great. Donnie Schatz ran a truck in Knoxville a couple years ago. He got caught up in a crash, finished 32nd. Uh, so this is not an easy transition. The cup car that Davenport will drive will be dramatically heavier than the super lay model he normally runs, and it will have less horsepower. And that's on top of it just not being a car built specifically to race on dirt. That's why the cup regulars have such an advantage in these situations. We've seen kind of the same thing with road course racing. Their car experience outweighs the track and surface experience that somebody like Davenport would have here. Either way, though, I think it'll be fun to watch JD learn, and uh, hopefully if he keeps it clean, he'll snag a good finish. Drop me a comment below with your uh, early Jonathan Davenport Bristol finish prediction. Do you think he's going to go top 15? Do you think he's going to crash? Let me know what you think below in the comments. Uh, before we move on, we are trying to cross 15,000 subscribers this weekend, and when we do, I'm going to give away some Dirt Tracker t-shirts. We've got the Sprint Car t-shirt, we've got the Late Model t-shirt. Uh, if you want to be in on it, make sure you drop a comment on yesterday's video uh, and subscribe to the channel. We're less than 100 away, uh, something like 70, 75 uh, you know, from being towards that 15,000 mark. So if the momentum continues, I think we should get there either later today or tomorrow. Subscribing to the channel is free, doesn't cost you a thing, helps make sure you don't miss future episodes, also helps out the channel. For 2023, we're still about 64% of show watchers who aren't subscribed. Uh, if you uh, do hit the subscribe button, you can also hit the notification bell. That will help you get alerts when I post new stuff as well. Uh, it was about two weeks ago that we last did an update on Ashton Torgerson, who was injured in that insanely scary crash at the Chili Bowl, where he actually completely came out of the car as it flipped down the backstretch. The family announced yesterday that Ashton has been cleared by doctors and will return to racing this weekend. He'll hop in a micro at Central Arizona Speedway alongside his brother, Austin. And that weekend is also going to include appearances from Kyle Busch and Matt Crafton. 
Uh, Ashton is a rowdy energy athlete, which is Kyle Busch's uh, energy drink company. So a lot of connections here. If you're in the area, definitely check that one out. Absolutely incredible that Ashton will be back racing again after what we witnessed just really a few weeks ago, a couple months ago. Uh, the weather around the country this weekend continues to wreak havoc on dirt races, and we lost the short track Super Series at Hagerstown. That got announced yesterday. We're supposed to get a 12,000 win race there. Uh, Tim McCready was going to participate in that one, but now officials are looking for possible reschedule dates. The next date on the calendar for the shoot, uh, Short Track Super Series is March 18th at Sealands Grove. Uh, if you want more information, you can find that at shorttracksuperseries.com. Uh, in Illinois, though, you hopefully won't have to worry about whether canceling the Extreme Outlaw Midget Opener as they're racing indoors at DuCoin. Tonight and tomorrow kick off their 35 race season. It'll be a good year to be a midget racer. No conflicts between Extreme and USAC, and there are a number of drivers who plan on running both schedules. One of those is Rudine Racing's Chance Crum. The driver from Washington has been on the rise in recent seasons, showing impressive speed at the Chili Bowl and leading laps and finishing well with USAC. Crum will contend on both sides in 2023, and Rudine is planning on adding a non-wing sprint card to their uh, stable for select races around Indiana as well this season. No more details were provided, who's going to drive it, what races, uh, but Crum's efforts and this new non-wing deal uh, join the already sizable wing sprint car schedule that Rudine runs with Zeb Wise. Looking at my race pass this morning, they've got 35 cars pre-entered for tonight's action, and the field is very good. Names like Mitchell Moles, Thomas Meserol, Cannon McIntosh, Chase Johnson, Zach Dom, Ethan Mitchell, Carter Sarf, Daniel Robinson, Jade Avedisia, Tyler Reimer, Chase McDermott, and a lot of others are expected. Zach Dom is the defending series champion. He's back to try and do it again. But instead of racing with Bundy Belt like he did last season, he's now in his own car. Uh, he's partnered with New Zealand's Justin Inslee and King Chassis to run his own program this season. Uh, if you want to see the future of motorsports, places like Extreme, uh, th these are good series to kind of start. A lot of these drivers are already in development pipelines. They're getting chances to race against vets like Dom and Timez. And those things will help push these drivers along. So a lot of the future of the sport is going to be in races like these. DeCoin is a little racetrack. Definitely the fighter jets and a gymnasium metaphor applies here. Should be a ton of action both nights. And if you can't get there, Dirt Vision will have live coverage. I am working too on adding the Extreme Outlaw Midget Series to the analytics section over at dirttracker.com. We haven't added anything new for a while. And I wanted to get this in there. Hopefully within the next day or two, we'll be able to uh, reveal those pages. You guys can scroll through all of the results and things like that from the last year of coverage and we'll, or the last year of races. And we'll continue to add them as uh, more races happen with that series. Uh, looking at the streaming schedule this weekend, a lot of stuff starting to ramp back up as we get closer to the spring, more racetracks opening up. Uh, there have been a bunch of cancellations this week, but there's still plenty of races to check out across Dirt Vision and Clay Preview, XR Plus, Flow Racing, and more. If you want to see that full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good Friday out there. Enjoy the dirt racing weekend. We'll be right back here on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily.